Hello and welcome to Geek Must Have. This is a project build edition. Basically, this is an electronic instruments case. What I like to think of is a mobile home for electronic test instruments. Bruce Lee. Love his martial arts movies, but some of his sayings are even better. And this one I like, particularly when I'm doing videos about project builds. A teacher's never a giver of truth. He's a guide. A pointer to the truth that each student then must find for themselves. So this video isn't about the only way to make an instrument case or how to go about doing it. It's a direction to help you think about which way you might go about doing the same thing. One of the design elements I have on everything I do is that it should be portable. I was carrying all the stuff you're going to see in this video around in three containers. Everything was all mixed up together, the cables were tangled. Almost always the thing I needed was at the bottom and I was afraid that the screens on some of these devices would get scratched. And I was also worried that the units would turn themselves on, which they did, and the batteries would drain and then I'd have to recharge them again. And I do a lot of traveling to various locations. I go to maker spaces, I go to innovation centers, I go to other makers' houses. And uh, I don't want to have to take all my large instruments with me. I want them to stay in the lab. And sometimes I need a kit to be able to take someplace to be able to do backup repairs or kind of put together an ad hoc learning lab. I learned this phrase, carry what you need, from one of my instructors who said when you're really getting started, you really don't know what you need. You know what you want. Yeah, I want a full electronics tech test box that when I push on a button, it all opens up and everything pops up. But what I need is what I can afford. What you start with is not going to be what you end up with. Um, as time goes on, you will find out that things evolve and your interest in interest evolve as well. Uh, I tend to be a little flirty with all sorts of different types of technology, so my box is never going to be the end, as you might think. Buy things as you need them. Don't buy them ahead of time thinking that you're going to use them sometime in the future, or you will end up with a basement full of stuff like I have that I'm just now trying to figure out. Go inexpensive. Uh, Julian Lett, he has a channel. I watch it religiously. I'll put, a, I'll put a link to his channel in the comments below. He, uh, he makes no qualms whatsoever about saying he buys things that are cheap to try them out. He also buys things cheap so that if they don't work, he can tear them apart and have a good time with them. I also tend to see if I can get a tool that'll perform more than one function. So here are some of the tools that I have. Uh, I have a DSA, or it's a DSO, 1112A touchscreen oscilloscope, which is right here. It has a nice recording function. You, pl uh, you plug a USB plug into the back of it and into the PC and it can record the traces. While it's not a very high sampling rate device, it's good enough for most of the things I need while I'm on the road. Also a D, DDS and an 8 high signal frequency signal generator. And a peak meter, PM18C multimeter with power sensors and true RMS. That's this. Uh, the little power sensor is this device here. Uh, it's a, basically an electromagnetic energy detector. You put it near something and it detects energy. And it's a true RMS style of a meter. The Innova 3320 Auto Ranging Multimeter, it's a red meter. It didn't make the floor while I was making this video. 
but it's uh, auto ranging. You don't have to worry about switching on to the proper voltage range or resistance range. And a TD V26 audio testing, audio generation, audio amplifier. It's not shown in the parts list, but I have reviewed this in a previous Geek Must Have video. It's basically a cute little radio from China that has an audio in, an audio out, an FM, a uh, small SD card chip on the side. It's replacing this Philips radio, which for the longest time was my uh, basic go-to uh, device for being able to uh, do audio, but it didn't do FM and it didn't have an aux in on it. So it got replaced. Uh, again, the TDV26, it's got an FM radio and an audio out. The other item is this electronics TD1 component tester. Kind of a neat device. You plug a component in there, resistor, capacitor, transistor, MOSFET, whatever. It will tell you what the device is, or tell you what the component is, and tell you its value. How many farads, how many ohms, how many volts. Lead tester. I, I, I must have seen 15 videos on this lead tester. Uh, basically, it's a small little device with a bunch of resistors in it. And you can plug an LED in there and press the red button. And before you solder an LED into a project, you can make certain that it's a good viable device or a good viable uh, LED. So uh, there's also a uh, YouTube video that I did on this a while back. I'll post a link. The Microsoft wireless keyboard with the integrated touchpad. This is a wireless device that uses Microsoft's proprietary dongle, but I like this keyboard. I use it on just about everything. I have an Android uh, TV system that hooks up to my TV, and I use this as the wireless keyboard for that. I also have one of these downstairs in the basement on the server rack to serve as the keyboard for my KVM for all the boxes on the rack. Portable lab power supply. I built this myself. Probably the best piece of construction I've done. And I have a project build, well, a post project build video in the works for this. Portable soldering fume extractor. This is another one of my home built kits. Uh, this goes to show that I don't know shit about how to work with wood. And I have a lot to learn. Uh, it works. But uh, the first time my grandson played with the grill on it, he's managed to make it into a, mu a musical instrument. And it makes too much noise for me to use right now. I actually moved it out of the tool case too because it took up too much space. Uh, a Disco USB oscilloscope and 16 channel logic analyzer. I'm gonna be replacing this in the near future with a more modern device. This one's going on six years old, uh, but it still works. And then I have bags of cables. I have all types of cables. I have a USB volt amp watt meter. It's this little meter right here. You plug the USB into a power supply and then you plug whatever you wanna test inside of this USB right here. And uh, on the display it reads the voltage, the amperage, the wattage. And I think this one even displays the temperature. A DT1130 electromagnetic radiation detector. It's not in the parts image, but you'll see it a little bit later on. Uh, it'll also be reviewed in an upcoming video. It's also known as a ghost detector. Ooh. Uh, you see these in the TV shows where they're telling you and showing you where the ghosts are. They put these little meters up all over the place because everyone knows that ghosts have electromagnetic radiation. And a uh, Gorilla USB power bank. This is my go-to power bank. It's got a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp output on it and a little meter on the front to let you know how the uh, where the voltage sits in the power charge. I have a pair of these and they work very, very well. 
Well, that's what's supposed to go inside of the case. What does the case look like? This is my camera case from 20 years ago when they built them to last. I traveled all over the country with me and over to Europe. Um, I had a couple of nice cameras and some other equipment in there and it just held together. It's sturdy. It's made from aluminum and wood. It has reinforced corners. And if you can see right here, those blobs of glue are hot glue that I stuck in there to make the case even a little stronger. It has these lockable clasps right here, but they're pretty much a joke. Uh, I uh, always ended up having a uh, luggage strap wrapped on this thing because I didn't want it to pop open. Uh, I still have the keys for the lock and they lock, uh, which is kind of amazing. And uh, it came with some dividers and that basic red and black strap that you see in there to hold things down. I looked at all sorts of different foam to put to package some of the devices in. I looked at compressed foam and PVC foam and uh, loose foam and uh, I ended up going with these compressed rubber mats with this uh, little uh, diamond pattern on them. That's similar to diamond pattern you find on metal on some trucks. And the reason why I used them is because I had them. They're old exercise mats that I had in the basement. They were uh, pretty easy to cut, and I say that jokingly, but they are. If you have a sharp uh, box cutter, uh, these are easy to cut, but the box cutter is gonna dull very, very quickly. And it does offer some real basic shock protection to some of these instruments, but I don't plan on throwing this case around, so I'm not too worried about that. So, how do you prep these mats to be able to stick them in? The first thing I wanted was a mat to stick in this uh, lid area. So, the inside lid, the first thing you do is cut all these nubs off the end that are used to interlock the uh, exercise mats together. And uh, then score out the size of the liner you want, and in this case, uh, it's a lid liner, so it has rounded corners and the like. And uh, I cut it a little bit bigger than needed because it's a lot easier to trim some off than it is to add some on. First thing I wanted to add was my Microsoft keyboard. So I did another cutout, a second one, and laid down the keyboard, traced it out, and put on a, drew some diagrams on there. Um, this uh, keyboard's my favorite keyboard. I like it. I use it with a number of things. And what you're looking at here is the back side of the foam. Uh, the layout needs to be transposed. This finger hole that's right here, I actually want to be on the right hand side. So that's why it's drawn on the left hand side. This is something I screw up frequently. I also left room for the damn dongle. Can't tell you how many of those I've lost. I have to buy them in six packs from Microsoft. I think I've paid more for dongles than I have for the keyboards. Again, the cutouts uh, in this case are a little undersized so that they're a little easier to trim. This is what it looks like inside of the case. You're gonna learn that your hot glue gun is your friend. I tried a different sets of glues to glue these in there and in the end it up, ended up being hot glue. And when you're using hot glue, pre prepare to get burned. Now, I had to use two layers of foam, uh, two layers of those exercise mats, to get the keyboard to stay in place. And what I should have done is I should have cut the first template out and used it to make the second template, or cut them together. But no, I was anxious and I wanted to glue the first one in and I did, and as a result, it was very difficult to make the second piece and as you can see right here eh, there's a few little mess ups but it's not actually that bad these reinforcements on the side are hot glued in place uh, and provides a little more shock cape uh, a little more shock protection not much and like i said this small area on the bottom is for some smaller instruments 
What are those smaller instruments? Well, again, I used the hot glue. I was very cautious, but I still burnt myself. And I used two layers of mats. Only this time, I taped them together and cut them out, and they look much more clean cut than the keyboard one. I used foam core for the bottom of the box. Foam core is uh, uh, compressed foam uh, poster board. It's got uh, compressed foam in the middle and then two layers of paper on the outside. And that's more than good enough to be able to handle holding the, the objects in place. But, uh, I learned my, uh, my lesson about the templates. If you can, notice the duct tape right along the edges here. That's my highly precise method of custom fitting the instruments into place. And uh, there's when this goes into place, there will be a space on the side here, not on the bottom. There'll be a space on the bottom for, or a space on the right for some additional instruments. Well, here's what it looks like all put together. There's the functional signal generator the touchscreen DSO 1112 oscilloscope. I left the signal cables on it because I, it's kind of delicate. I'm afraid that this area right here where the cables attach is going to break, so I don't want to be taking them on and off too much. It wasn't an expensive meter, but I'd like to try and keep it for more than a couple of months. And the component, this uh, TC1 uh, component identifier and tester. Now, all three of these have been reviewed in previous videos and uh, they fit very nice into the top lid. So everything in a place at a place for everything. A cheesy cliche but accurate. One of the first rules in getting organized is to have a place for things to go. One of the reasons for building this box one of the reasons why I'm having a feeble attempt to reorganize my basement. The contents of this case will change over time. Uh, I do have plans for a uh, building a small little digital volt amp meter that's dedicated for just doing that. I will have a project build video on this and uh, a new oscilloscope to replace the disco that's out there. So in the top lid we have the Microsoft keyboard and the wireless dongle right there. We have the signal generator, the oscilloscope, and the parts identifier. In the bottom, this box is quite full. There's a little bit of space for some other things, and uh, I'm not really sure if this is the right combination. I, I got a feeling it's going to change rather rapidly. Uh, you have to learn to use what you have and learn what's missing and constantly keep the case in the right shape. And sometimes you have to have some compromises and take something out. Like I had to take out that damn soldering fume extractor because it was so big. Uh, I liked it. I built it myself. But I needed other things in the case. So it's, you know, it's need over like right now. Well, there's the portable bench power supply right here and it's uh, partner 30 volt 5 amp power brick. When this isn't running on the four internal 18650 cells it runs off of this power bank and when the power bank's plugged into it it charges the internal bank of batteries. My USB power bank down here and right ne next to it my 1130 electromagnetic radiation ghost detector. You never know when you might be at one of these old makerspace buildings and there's a ghost there. Uh, USB oscilloscope, the disco and the logic analyzer, the two multimeters, and all sorts of cables, this time sorted by signal cables, interface cables, and power cables. So instead of a big whole tote, plastic tote full of cables, it's a little better organized. Well, this is the case closed. I never did trust the locks on this, and like I mentioned before, I had a luggage strap on there 
But I also had uh, proximity alarm. 20 years ago, it was pretty modern, pretty uh, forward thinking. Uh, basically, it was a proximity alarm. It clamped onto the luggage strap, and I carried a dongle in my pocket like a keychain. And if I walked more than six feet away from this, this most blood curdling alarm would go off. And uh, I eventually had to take the damn thing off because I scared people half to death with it when I left it at uh, conventions and trade shows. Uh, I thought about putting a uh, biohazard sticker on the outside of it, like right about here. But uh, people don't have a sense of humor anymore, so that's probably not a good idea. Uh, somebody did send an email to me and suggest that I go and find, oh, they even sent me the link to this human organs inside sticker to put on there, uh, mentioning that very few thieves will steal a box that's got human organs in it. This is not something you can just take to the pawn shop and get $10 for. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I had fun making this case and I learned a lot. Keep your glue gun hot, your knife sharp. A phrase from the army, two is one and one is none. Have backups for things that are real critical, like power packs, uh, cables, multimeters, anything that you can have a spare for, this would be good. Use your first cutout for something as the template for the second or the third. I hope you enjoyed this video and possibly learned something from it. If you liked it, please click on the like button. Leave any comments or feedback in the section below. And if you want to see more on technology and software, visit my blog at geekmusthave.com. One last thing. I'd like to ask you to help a geek and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Now, take a little time, use your toolbox, and go build something.